Welcome to the Fat Guys with Smokers podcast. I'm Mike. And I'm John. We're a couple of overweight barbecue enthusiasts trying to share our love for sweet and smoky food with the world. Thanks for hanging out with us as we talk about life, share recipes, successes, and failures that have all led to our love of cooking outdoors. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Fat Guys with Smokers. I never know if I'm starting too early. Right on the money. Um, <clears throat> also, I don't know what to do with the intro playing. Are we supposed to look at the camera? Are we supposed to look like we're looking things up? I think I look at the camera when I do my intro. Okay. And then I never look at it again. Deal. Try Try and act natural, so it's a... All right, so fluid like conversation. You and I are talking. Everybody else isn't here. Yeah. Sometimes we talk to the third man. Yes. I love those. Or I don't know if they talk. What do they call it in show business? The fourth wall. F- the fourth wall. Fourth wall, seems like. Hey, fourth wall. Welcome. Looking good. Um. Anyway, I'm Mike, here with John. What have you been up to, John? You've been traveling the world the last couple weeks. Last week was intense. I did six nights in a hotel. Four Gross. four hotels, three time zones. Oh, really? So you weren't in the same spot when you were in California. You were kind of all over. No, man. We uh, flew into LAX, which is in my top three least favorite airports in the country. Mm. Um, and I don't know why. It, it honestly wasn't that bad. This was the least construction I've ever seen at LAX. They're always doing construction there. I yeah. don't travel very much, so all of this is news to me. Yeah, LAX seems like it's always under construction. But, um, yeah, flew into LAX, spent Monday in LA. Tuesday, we were, we were on the outskirts of LA. We're in... Uh, Pasadena and then Long Beach. Just in meetings the whole time or schmoozing people or what? No, we went, we saw our field team. So some of our field service guys, we went to spend some time with them, went and did some field work with them just to try and stay in touch, man. It's one of those things you sit in an office all day and you think you're making brilliant ideas until someone in the field actually has to make it happen. So I hear that. I think that's true with every industry. Yeah, so tried to get out and just see what it is and get (coughs) real feedback instead of just continuing to assume. So Kudos to you. Yeah, did that, and then we were in Orange County. And, like, this is all, like, general L.A. area, but the traffic's so bad that it it felt like we were driving as much as when we went back east and put a 1,000 miles on the rental car. Jeez. Um, And then we ended up in San Diego. Flew home Thursday morning. Drove from the airport to my house, picked Haley up, drove back to the airport, and then we went to Dallas for the weekend. And Dallas was for fun, not for work. It was for fun, and I did something that I rarely do that Haley actually had to check my phone because she didn't believe me when I told her. Go on. I logged out of my work email. John. I know, right? Wow. It's like almost a healthy thing to do. Yeah, I'm proud of you, man. Yeah. Good work. But it was fun. Yeah, ate a lot of food. Um, timing didn't work out on any like barbecue though, which was yeah kind of a bummer, but, um, had some good Mexican food. They don't have barbecue in Texas, do they? Uh, no, yeah. I did make my, uh, pilgrimage to the meat church, to meat church to pay flagship homage, huh? store. Yeah. But Matt was fishing in Florida. That's what his Instagram said. So hmm. that's awesome, man. Yeah. So we had a good time though. Cool. Good for you guys. Yeah. What'd you do? I uh, I taught school and tried not to get fired. So <laughs> no, I, I mean for, May for is... those counting, there are six and a half days of school left. Yeah, but I mean, if we're getting technical, next week doesn't really count. So I told some of my kids like I'm not telling you not to come next week, but if you didn't, it would be okay. Your grade would be fine. But May's a tough time to be a teacher. I was telling John earlier, like, I don't know how you normal people with jobs do it. Like, I'm so ready for the break. And I still work during the summer, so it's not like I just sit at home and eat bonbons. But just the change of pace is 
Much needed, so. No, you don't need bonbons. You eat jalapeno poppers. That's true. And they are delicious. Um, Although, I didn't even tell you this, but the jalapeno poppers made me remember. Apparently, um, one of the groups in in the multifamily industry, um, which is the space that my boring day job is in, mm. um, has a barbecue competition as an annual event. What? That we've got a whole bunch of clients in town this week uh, that one of our customers was. He was like, where were you? I was like, I don't even know what you're talking about. Oh, wow. Um, and he promptly walked over to our CEO and told him that he'd cancel if we didn't participate <laughs> next year. <laughs> so I'm That's going to awesome. Dallas next year for a barbecue Dude, competition. sick. That's yeah. awesome. Good on you. Yeah. So. That's fun. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to get to work on the smoker. <laughs> Dude, seriously. Things are progressing on that front. We haven't even talked about it. We need to make a plan. I know. Uh, more creations was not joking. It was we have not photographic a joke. evidence. <laughs> so pretty excited. That'll be awesome. Yeah, we need to talk about that tonight, actually. Yeah. Um okay. Shout outs, John. Do you wanna tell us how we came across this one? Um well, let me let me get it pulled up here. But we did a sticker swap and giveaway a while ago, and uh, James, and I'll let you read his name because I can't see it on my phone. Um, but James Cole reached out to us and wanted a sticker swap. Yeah, ain't no telling barbecue. Ain't no telling. That's what it is. Yeah. Uh, and he looks like our kind of guy. I mean, he looks a little skinny, so I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm not sure he's quite a fat guy, but the food, I'm just going to say he's got bad genetics. That's the only reason he's not fat, <laughs> yeah, because obviously. the food looks delicious. It does look really good, and his setup looks like something we'd be into. A lot of barrels, I see. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of, you know, just backyard. It's not a million-dollar outdoor kitchen, but it's some dude's backyard where he's put his smokers. Like, I love it. So Yeah, and he's got two... Uh, Two big turkey fryers, and maybe the, maybe he's doing crawfish in them instead of instead oh, of turkey. Probably. But man, yeah, it looks like looks like James knows how to get down. Yeah, James is no joke for sure. He's got a big old smoker. I don't know how big it is, but I mean, it it looks like three barrels long, a huge offset, which is super awesome. So, anyway. Yeah, I'm looking look forward at, to getting to know James a little better. Cause look at all that chicken, dude. That is a lot of chicken. We probably should have done this when we weren't live on air. No, this is. Yeah. <laughs> we'll uh, we'll, <coughs> we will definitely be tagging James. You guys need to go check him out because yeah. a couple of his posts just look off the hook. Oh, look amazing. So so. Thanks anyway. for reaching out, James. Yeah. Looking forward to to talking with you and getting to know you a little better and hopefully learning some stuff from each other. So, Ain't no telling barbecue. Ain't no telling barbecue. So, check them out. Very cool. Cool. Very cool. Well, it's, uh, it's ironic that we're going to talk about this tonight. Go on. Because we didn't do it very well for this. Yeah. For this episode. Which I think kind of... We, we did that on purpose, not really at all, but I feel like it's going to come across as why it's important. You know? I know. Kind of like that sentence I just started. I didn't really think about it before I just said it. Yeah. So normally, Mike and I have an outline. Uh-huh. We don't script anything here. Nope. But we've, uh, we've got an outline that, you know, kind of hits, you know, who our shout outs are going to be, what, uh, what we want to talk about, are important points. It helps us steer the conversation, kind of. It mostly keeps us on topic, so we're not all over the place. We lob some softballs up for each other because we know the points that the other one wants to hit. Yep. We didn't do that tonight. Nope. Life got busy. So, everyone hold on. This is going to be a ride. (laughs) Strap in, everybody. (laughs) That you may or may not want to remember. And ironically enough, today we want to talk about preparation for cooks. Yeah. We, uh... 
Yeah, as we were we were talking about what we were gonna go over, like preparation is a huge part of barbecue. Yeah. Um you know, you, you brought it up earlier, Mike, and oh sorry, gotta get comfy here. <laughs> I, John tore his shoulder again. Yeah. It's stupid. Don't get old, people. <laughs> it's heck to get old. Or if you do, do it really fast and just be done. <laughs> um What's that? <laughs> uh, what's that show jack with robin williams where he gets really old really fast yeah 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 um no i forgot what i was gonna say preparation preparation um well oh that's what it like you said this earlier tonight yep good barbecue is not something you just like come home from work and be like huh i'm gonna have ribs tonight yeah it's hard to be overly uh, spontaneous when you're trying to do good barbecue because you have to put in the preparation. It's not going to cook in 30 minutes. Yeah. When, when we talk about hot and fast barbecue, like we're normally talking a minimum of three or four hours. Yeah. Yeah. Unless you're doing steaks or something like the hot and fast does not mean throw it in the microwave and it's done in, you know, a few minutes. Like barbecue takes preparation and, uh, yeah. So what are some things that you do to prepare? Um, Just in general. I guess each cook is going to be different yeah, as far as Every cook's and different, and, and I think a lot of this is just like good cooking habits. Uh-huh. Because, I mean, we talk about barbecue being hot and fast. Um, I mean, I did, I did fried rice on the Blackstone tonight. Mm-hmm. And, well, I mean... He, even that, I mean, I had to make the rice yesterday because you used day old rice yeah, for fried it's rice. Day old, right? So that took a little bit of preparation, but you know, even when you are cooking hot and fast on something like a flat top, you've got to have everything together. Like, there's not like it'll burn if you run inside for five minutes and you're looking for, you know, the soy sauce or you're looking for whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, you've got to get your ingredients together and i like i think that's a big unlock um is one starting out and this is gonna this is gonna sound contradictory to everything in the man handbook but you got to read the instructions like you got to read you've got to read the recipe and you've got to read the whole recipe all of it yep it drives Haley crazy because i often in my infinite wisdom will skim a recipe and say I know how to do this. I understand the principles. <laughs> and then I get in the process of making and I get halfway through and I'm like, well, what the crap is this talking about? And yeah, because I didn't read the recipe, I didn't, I didn't have an ingredient or the ingredient list didn't list everything that was in the actual instruction. So mm-hmm. just doing your homework and doing your research is a big part of it. Yeah. I do that all the time. And a lot of the recipes that we follow, uh, at least that I follow are are like YouTube videos. I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah, I want to do it just like that. So I'll watch the YouTube video and I've got, I think I've got a pretty good memory. And so I'll just start going and be like, okay, then he did this, then he did this. And I'll rewatch it as I'm waiting for something to, to finish or whatever and be like, I missed this. I missed that. I should have done this. That would have made this so much easier. So the whole recipe has got to be, like you said, it's against like... You almost got to give away your man card for a second because how many IKEA things do we read the entire instructions? But have you? I mean, have you have you ever actually read IKEA instructions? No, they're brutal. They're not helpful to begin with. But... <laughs> I guess that's not a good example. <laughs> but no, it, yeah, you, you just taking the time to slow down. I think is the first piece of it. Yeah, and I think you've got to give yourself that time. Like I said, you can't expect, and I've done this a couple of times. Like life's pretty busy and I've been like, man, I haven't put anything on Instagram for a while. I need to cook tonight and I'll try to throw something together after work and you can't rush something in a couple of hours and make it be worth anything. Yeah. That's a, it's like the guy from, from Toy Story. You can't rush art. Yeah. Like it, uh, yeah, it, it takes time and I think. You have such a better experience during the cook. Yeah. When you do it that way, when you take the time and plan it and like really when you're a little bit more methodical about your preparation, um, 
it just works better because you know what to expect. You can game plan a little bit around your reaction. If you're running around trying to do stuff, and maybe I'm the only one that does this, but man, I get grumpy. Like oh, That's a really I good get, point. It's not I get, fun. I get angsty because it's not going the way I think it's going to. And it, like, mm-hmm. I'm a planner. Like I like having a plan. I like having a list. And if things don't go according to my plan, whether my plan was right or wrong, like I get frustrated and I want to like, so I just get grumpy. And by the time it's all done, like I don't even want to eat what I cooked. It's just like eat the food people. Right. It wasn't fun. I, I agree. I do that all the time. I'm flustered and I'm frantic and I'm running around and then it's like, why did I even do this? Like this isn't, if you're not enjoying it, I don't, the food's awesome. I love barbecue food, but I love the process of cooking it yep. even more. And so if it's not fun, it's like, what did I just waste all this time and money for yeah. if I didn't enjoy it? So, yeah. So I, yeah, I think doing your research and then giving yourself the time you need to do it right. Yeah. So, um, and that, you know, I keep going back to, to this when Molly was on. Like plan to be done early. Don't yeah. Don't try and like do it by the skin of your teeth because you'll be miserable. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Because it won't go right. And you know, I think back to I'm like reminiscing on all these things we've talked about before. But mm-hmm. um, Irv, when we cooked the pig, yeah. Like, can you imagine if we if we hadn't planned a couple of extra hours in there? Right. And that sprinkler turned on. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a really good point. Um, yeah. It like that sprinkler turning on added 45 minutes easy Yeah, to our cook. And if we had been trying to like cut it right on the money, like we were already 15, 20 minutes late with the meat. Yeah. Like we would have had a mutiny on our hands. Right. And if you don't know what we're talking about, Irv, John and I did a big cook. For our church, we built a cinder block pit in the church parking lot, got there at 2 a.m., got the fire started, got Irv. Was he on? He was on, right? Or were we uh, still waiting no, for he... the pit to come up to temp? No, I think I think he was on. He was on, and the sprinklers came on, and one rogue sprinkler <laughs> just sprayed our entire pit for a while until we figured out where it was coming from and covered it up with a barrel and really yeah. slowed things down. Yeah. So go back. I think it's like episode two. Yeah. I think it was one of the first things we talked about. If you haven't listened to that, go back and listen. It was a good time. It really was. We learned a lot, but yeah, but yeah, that, no, that's a really good point. Cause we did plan a couple extra hours and I remember being like, I feel like we don't need to get up at two and be here and start it. And looking back, I'm really glad we did. Cause like you said, we were cutting it close as it was. So. Yeah. Well, and I think like, I think that's a great example of, on that one, we planned a lot. I mean, I bought a book to yep. read about how how to build a pit and like how to manage a fire. And mm-hmm. um, we went into that knowing that things weren't going to go according to our plan. Mm-hmm. Like it was a learning opportunity. And I think being able to acknowledge when you're going to have learning opportunities, when you're going to like spend that time and you're actively trying to learn how to do something right? versus... I'm just going to do tried and true, like three, two, one ribs or a pork shoulder. Like I can yep. cook a pork shoulder in my sleep mm-hmm. and I'm like, I'm not trying to learn. I'm not trying to think about anything like that's just a mechanical. I'm doing it because I'm trying to get to the end product. And mm-hmm. those are very different experiences in your cook. And you need to right. decide which kind of experience you want to have. That's a really good point. And I would, but I would even say, even if you're feeling pretty confident in a cook, like if you fail to prepare a few things, it could still go south on you pretty quick. Oh yeah. I feel like, like, yeah, I think I've seen three or four posts just in the, in the last week about guys that have run out of propane during a, yes. Like while they were grilling something or, I mean, get on any of the Facebook groups for like Traeger or Green Mountain Grills or Camp. Like, I could get on any one of those groups and probably find 10 posts of 
so I ran out of pellets in the middle of the night. Mm-hmm. Is this safe to eat? <laughs> like, <clears throat> and there are all sorts of, you know, phrases and sayings out there about like when it is and isn't right. safe to eat. But yeah, there are things you have to do every single time you cook. Yeah. Like, is your, is your grill clean? Like when was the last time you vacuumed out your grill? Yeah. We talked about how that can have a terrible, nasty, like taste and smell and everything. If your yeah. grill's not clean for sure. Yeah. If you, if it's not clean, like, do you have enough pellets? Mm-hmm. Like, we were talking about this earlier, like I, I have a business that sells pellets and I have been running to the, to the storage unit where, you know, we warehouse the pellets racing to get there before the gates lock for the night so that I can get pellets because I was almost out because I didn't check before. Mm. And I happen to know somebody else in this room has texted late at night and said, <laughs> uh, a few times, a few times. <laughs> Basically, every Saturday night that I'm trying to cook something for Sunday, I end up having to text you or your dad. Be like, hey guys, you guys in town? But like, it, it, the thing is, it's not like you're the only one. Yeah. Like that's the whole, that's how my whole business started was, I'm, I'm selling pellets out of my garage, essentially. Mm-hmm. That it's a, they're available anytime you need them. Like, mm-hmm. I've put pellets out on the porch at 2 a.m. when someone's like called me frantically like, hey, I'm so sorry. Like, I'll pay you triple. I was like, yeah, you will yes, pay me you triple. <laughs> like, um, no, that's but, a, it's a good point because I remember vividly, um, I, Whitney's grandma gave me a nice gas grill for graduation when I graduated from college. And so we, we'd used it a few times. We invited people over for just burgers and dogs. And I had, I, I think it was Whitney's whole family was at my house and I ran out of propane like halfway through the cook and just had to unhook and be like, Hey, I'll be back in a little bit. Like everybody was pretty upset and I felt terrible. So that's a really good point. One that I had not even thought about was fuel. You have to have fuel. So yeah, there, yeah, there are just some things you've got to. Do you have fuel? Do you have all the ingredients? Like, mm-hmm. pull it all out. Like, I run out of rub all the time. And yeah. it's like, you know, I've already trimmed trimmed a pork shoulder. Like, I'm getting ready to season it. I pull it out. And it's like, why is there only half an inch of honey hog in, yeah. in the jar? Like, yeah, because my kids put it on everything. And I didn't, like... Pull it all out. Make sure you have everything you need before you start. Yeah. And that's something you do every time. You know what I think would be cool is if our listeners posted some of their preparation fails on Instagram. Like, when has been a time when you were not prepared and it came back to bite you in the butt? Cause I've got, I know I've got a few stories. You probably got a few stories. Like that would be hilarious to, to hear from other people when their lack of preparation has kind of, you know what I mean? That would be funny. Although now I kind of want like, I want to hear your story. Well, I just shared one when I ran out of fuel. I guess that's true. Yeah. Well, tell me one of yours. Uh, I'm pretty like, I already shared mine. Like my, uh. My origin story was yeah. it, like was the ultimate failure and almost ended my barbecue experience when <laughs> damn Brinkman. <laughs> it's been a minute since we've had this Freaking conversation. Brinkman. <laughs> oh, oh man. I forgot yeah. about our hatred of Brinkman. Man, that was the worst experience of my life. <laughs> that was one where I clearly hadn't prepared enough. Uh-huh. I had not like I tried to cook for a family meal. First time I'd ever done barbecue. And yeah, I had read a couple of things, but I just didn't, I didn't have the experience. And like, yeah, regardless of how many YouTube videos you watch, the real thing is always going to react differently. Yeah. 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 And that, especially with live fire, uh-huh. 
so much of that is like art and feel and Mm -hmm. knowing how to read the flame and and the wind and yeah there yeah i don't think even with a gas grill like it uh like it wasn't raining but like it kind of wanted to rain tonight Uh um and the wind was starting to blow yeah um like my blackstone that I've had up to 600 degrees before when I cranked it all the way, like I couldn't get it over 375 tonight. Yeah. Um, there are just so many external factors that you, you are hard pressed to duplicate what you see in a YouTube video mm-hmm. in your, in your real life experience. Yeah. Especially if you're like us and you're cooking on your back deck and not in an outdoor kitchen with walls and wind breaks and all kinds of things for sure. Yeah. Speaking of though, have you seen the the wind guards that they have for Blackstones? No. I'm sure they have them for other things, but it's like it's a like the Camp Chef type wind guards. It, it's that kind of thing, but it's like a aluminum plate that drops down on the side of the griddle. Oh. That after tonight, I thought they were gimmicky, and I was like, I don't need this. I might need this. Interesting. So I'll have to do a little research there. Yeah, I'll send you a link. Yeah. So, One thing that I was just thinking is, if you're just starting out, or even if you're not just starting out, and you're going to do something new, maybe don't do it for a big, group, a of big people. group of people. Like, for example, if you just got your offset finished and you were so excited <laughs> about it, maybe don't throw eight port bucks on there for your ward and hope that it works out, you know? It was a blast, and it did work out, but... Dude, you dodged so bad. many bullets. I was like, <laughs> seriously, I had a lot going against me on that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and look, there are things that you, as you gain more experience, you can get away with more yeah. things. Yeah. Like you've got a ton of live fire cooking. So while I, while I was pulling away after bringing you a Mountain Dew in the morning, <laughs> going, what is he doing? <laughs> Um, like, like you've got way more live fire experience than I do that, you know, you know how to manipulate the flame and manipulate the heat to, to try and get there. And you knew when it was taking you longer than you thought it should Mm -hmm. to get to your stall and get through the stall. Like you knew, you knew how to cheat it. You knew how to put it in a crutch and get it to push through and, yeah, that's and true. still have a great product. That's true, and that's after ten years of yeah of working with live fire yeah, and see. being able to to cook pork shoulders. That's a good point. I tried to cook for my entire family, being fairly new to the family. Like yeah. we'd been married for I don't know three, four years. Like so, I wasn't brand new, but mm-hmm. like it was my first opportunity to really cook for the family. Mm-hmm. Um, cooking on something I had never cooked on before. Yeah, shows you how smart young John was. <laughs> Dude, young Mike did the exact same thing. It was yeah. with ribs, and it did not go well. Dude, ribs are hard. Yeah, I did it one. I feel like the maiden voyage when you're just cooking for yourself and you're experimenting. I swear, it almost always seems to go well. And then you're like, I can do this with more people. I'm doing it. And it's just a different animal. Every situation is different, regardless of what you've done before. And so proper preparation is kind of the key to fixing those issues. Well, I think the other thing to keep in mind is when you're cooking for yourself, most of the time you're doing like a rack of ribs or a pork shoulder. Mm -hmm. When you put eight pork shoulders in a smoker it changes the whole game yeah like, things are going to react differently yeah like you're changing the thermodynamics of the of the cooking chamber mm-hmm. like now you've got a whole bunch more cold wet meat which right. are giant heat sinks so now you've got to have more heat and you burn fuel faster and you go through fuel faster so it um if you've never done a big cook and cooked for a lot of people, like find a way to try that out without 
being the center of attention or instead of cooking eight, cook two or three and, Mm -hmm. you know, take them to people. Nobody's going to be mad when you show up on their porch with a pork shoulder. Yeah. And if they do, they're not the people you want to spend your time with. Get rid of that negativity in your life. We just broke the fourth wall right there. I did. did. We both looked at it. Yeah. And even better, I just took Katie Johnson some pork not that long ago, so I shouldn't get... I there shouldn't get heat for it. We're not going to get any hate from it. Yeah. Saying, Love where's it. my pork? Yeah. Katie, you've got your pork. It's there. Hmm. Yep. Yeah. I. Uh, their daughter babysat for us uh, for the adult session of state conference. Oh, nice. And I said, I told I told their daughter, like, I'll pay with cash or I'll pay you with pork. <laughs> like, <laughs> you, you can have pulled pork for, for dinner or... I paid her, like I gave her cash, but Katie was sure to let me know that she and Sean would be happy with uh, They'd be fine with it, huh? With dinner, so. Nice. Everybody got what they wanted. <laughs> it was a win-win for everybody. Yep. So, John, what is the thing, what is the cook you've done? You've done a lot more exotic stuff than I have. What have you done that required the most preparation, would you say? Like, every the, cook's different, but the most, like... Planning and everything. Irv. Yeah. The pig. I mean, again, like it's just volume. Like right. it was big, but I mean, that was one. I mean, I bought a pallet of cinder blocks. We had to have, like we had to build the pit. Like mm-hmm. we, and even with, a bunch of guys helping like that was still an hour to build a pit and yep. get it squared away and had to drive out to Timbuktu to, to pick it up and, you know, load the body in the cooler and pick the bot like, and it was like a nonstop. How long did we cook her? 16 hours? Uh, it was 14, 14. But I mean, we were there the whole time cause we had no idea how anything would react mm-hmm. and it was a long day. Yeah. That was, that one probably, like, took the most, like, I mean, we'd been talking about doing it for five or six years when we finally did it, but, mm-hmm. um, yeah, that one was probably 20 or 30 hours of, like, thought and planning and research and execution and building and picking up and Mm -hmm. yeah 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 that that's probably the most complicated like the i think i'm trying to think like home cook like i think the first couple of briskets i did yeah um like briskets and intimidating expensive Mm -hmm. cut of meat so um that one took a long time and then i mean i put a ton of time into thanksgiving but that's not necessarily because it's complicated that's like thanksgiving is my like that's my yeah. holiday you like to do a lot of different things too right it's yeah. not just like a pork butt but you're doing no i mean all we kinds did of stuff i mean one year like we cured our own ham we cooked a turkey we did sweet potatoes out on the um out on the smoker i think that's Ooh. actually my favorite way to do sweet potatoes I was say, how is that so how do you do that um so you stab the potatoes just so they don't explode right same uh-huh. same thing as in the oven uh-huh. and then put the sweet potatoes just out in the smoker cook them I want to say it's like for 45 minutes to an hour and then you bring them inside and you scoop, like you pull them out of the skins, scoop uh-huh. them into another dish and then you put them back out with the marshmallows and stuff on them. Oh, um, interesting. Yeah. Did that. Um, cranberries, smoked caramel apple pie. Oh, how was that? <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I don't smoke a lot of like bread type stuff i mean pizza i guess but yeah no interesting. We smoked smoked the cream that we used to make the caramel and the whipped cream oh and it was 
pretty bomb, huh? It was gangbusters. Interesting. Um, but yeah, so it did all of that. I feel like there was something else we did, but yeah, I normally, I will start planning Thanksgiving, like around my birthday at the really? end of September. Huh. And have kind of an idea. Mm-hmm. See, and we were kind of talking about this before. I am not by nature much of a planner. I'm kind of a just, let's just see what happens type of guy. Um, but when I did that competition live? last year, dude, it's it's hard. Just kidding. I don't know any other <laughs> way. I can't turn it off. It's who I am. <laughs> you see Modern Family. <laughs> when they're presenting Lily. Turn it off, Cam. I can't turn it off. It's who I am. We mean the music. Anyway, uh, when I did the competition last year, like you had to plan. And it had to be like, okay, we've got to, by this time, if our ribs aren't on, we're not ready for competition. Like by this time, if the chicken is not whatever, then we're not going to be able to have anything for the judges. And so that was really the first time that I was like, Oh, I should probably have a plan. And, and you did, you had to have everything there. And the thing, the thing with barbecue is I feel like there's like an hour of just crazy intense, you're trimming, you're rubbing, you're getting everything ready to go. And then you're kind of sitting and watching with a few, you know, maybe you're spraying it, misting it, wrapping it, whatever, occasionally throughout the next few hours. But it's like crazy busy. You have to have everything ready. And then you sit for a while and enjoy your life. And then when it comes off, you're crazy busy again. Yeah. When you're, when you're trying to finish everything and you want everything done at the same time, Uh it's madness. Yeah. 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 You said you, uh, your brother had signed you guys up again for this year. Yeah. What What are they cooking this year? Is it the same thing? No, dude. They're doing. Shoot, I should have should have looked this up before I misspeak. But I'm pretty sure. Again, not much of a planner. I should have this all figured out and ready to go. But this year they're doing standby. I'm gonna cough now. Sorry, podcast world. <coughs> I got, assist, buddy. I got you with the mute. Yeah, thank you. Uh, oh my goodness. Oh, I remember. I mean, the, <clears throat> your options are probably chicken thighs, sausage, pulled pork, back ribs, spare ribs, brisket, tri tip. Uh,. Dessert. Yeah, we did the four meat competition. So we'll oh, do, they've upped it. Yeah, ribs, chicken, pork butt, and brisket. I want, and this is like the cash smokeout. Uh-huh. Yeah, a ten thousand dollar purse. I may have to get in on this. You this have year. to. I mean, you're welcome to. We'll have to see. I don't know. Should be fun. They're doing an SCA cook off too. And. State Steak champ. Cook-off yeah. Association, which I don't really want to get into, but one day perhaps. Anyway, but yeah, it's going to be. I mean, those are a lot of different times, temps, things, you know. So, well, and some of that. Some planning. I may have to do that. Yeah. It's a good time. It, it sounds like a lot of fun, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> that was a blast. I was so tired last year, but it was really fun. More or less tired than Irv? I was less... T- well, you took a lot of the mental load of Irv because you had read the book. You had done the research longer than I had. I was mostly just there to be like, okay, hey, what do you need me to do now? I was kind of... Dude, the- I feel like you did so much of the fire management. Well, yeah. I would have been lost... With the fire management. I don't know, because I feel like I was wrong most of the time. But um, Yeah, that so was weird, wasn't it? I was definitely more physically exhausted with Irv, but this was way more mentally exhausting. Because it was my brother, my dad, and my brother-in-law, who I love dearly, but are kind of like, yeah, this is fun. But I was the one that was pushing everything, and so I had all of these plans in my head, and they were just like, okay, hey, what do you need me to do? And it's almost... It's almost 
worse to try to find, try to involve more people than to just do it yourself sometimes, you know? Oh, I want one a hundred percent. Yeah. Like most of my life, like I just want to do it because I, I know how it should go in my head and I don't want to have to explain it to somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. Which tells you a lot about me as a person and why, (laughs) and some of the things John gets to work on in his life. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Yeah. But that's, uh, I mean, I think that's where it comes into, like, there are teams that do barbecue. Yeah. And, like, you've got to. And it makes sense, like. You've got to work together because there's some things, like, especially when you're exhausted and you've been up for 20 hours. Uh Uh-huh. Like, I mean, if you're doing pork shoulders, like, you can do a pork shoulder in eight hours. A good pork shoulder takes at least 12. Yeah. And a brisket, like, it's going to take a minute. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. So. So, but, yeah, when you get fun. mentally exhausted, like, you need someone who just knows what you're thinking and knows exactly. the game plan. And, and instead of having to try to explain, do this because of this and make it look this way, it's, yeah, it can be challenging. But, so, yeah. I, but it was a blast. And I'm not saying that. I don't mean to come off like they were absolutely no help. I did everything. Like they were awesome. I was going to say, be careful. You're about to offend half of our listening yeah, audience. That's true. All three of them. But uh, no, they were awesome. But it was just, again, probably lack of planning. Like we hadn't gotten together and been like, hey, we need to do this by this time. It was all in my head. And my head is a scary, dangerous place. <laughs> so anyway. It's like my garage. Yeah. And my garage. Except Haley cleaned my garage. Nice. Dude, meanwhile, so, he spent so, all day Saturday cleaning the garage. So now it's nice, neat, and organized, and I know where nothing is. <laughs> it's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just grateful it got done, honestly. Yeah. Like, I have no complaints. Yeah. So. Well, do you want to tease what's happening on the next episode, or do you want to just make it be a surprise? Tease away. Well, Saturday is a special day. It is a special day. I didn't know it was a special day until you told me how special of a day it was. That's because I belong to an exclusive club. <laughs> exclusive <laughs> is a good word for it. What's <laughs> Saturday, An elitist John? community. <laughs> <laughs> All you fancy people up there with your expensive pellet grills. Hey, man. I've spent less on my pellet grills than most people have. You played it very well. Yeah. Yeah, I was I was thinking about that the other day. I've got I don't know, like retail sticker a few. That's I'm I'm trying to like do math really quick. That's that's six. For those of you listening 20, at home, John seven. has a very perplexed look on his face. I've probably got like $3,500 like retail sticker yeah. out on my back patio uh-huh. and another $2,500 in the garage retail sticker that I've like all in maybe spent a thousand dollars on. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, so I am definitely like a poser in, in the crowd, but, um, <laughs> It's Traeger Day. It is Traeger Day. I didn't even know what Traeger Day was until you explained it to me. Um, and I think maybe it was yesterday. Yesterday was Traeger Day? I, no. Hang oh. on. Because that I, would be I, awkward. I have no idea if there's any correlation here, but Haley texted me yesterday. Oh. She gets an... I think it was yesterday. The days all blur together. Oh, don't they, though? May's the worst. It was Monday she texted me. Yesterday was National Barbecue Day. What? Dude. May 16th. That's We suck, man. Um, But yeah, so Traeger Day, kickoff to barbecue season. It's always kind of this time of the year. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a great opportunity for Traeger to sell a bunch of grills and yeah. pedal stuff. But it's, uh, it's fun because everybody in Traeger Nation is on Instagram, on Facebook, wherever they are posting a ton of stuff. And um, 
we're going to get on it. Yeah. We're going to, we're going to fire up the old ironwood and. Which I'm excited because I've never seen the ironwood in action. It is pretty awesome. Yeah. Super smoke action. And we are going to do something. I think I talked about this maybe an episode or two ago. Seems like you had. I don't remember. I don't know. I have wanted to do this for like two or three years and I finally found the main ingredient. Yeah. Allegedly it's all over the South, but it's hard to find. Oh yeah. No, like in, like I saw it while we were in the South, we stopped at an H E B to, um, that was the other thing I brought home. Um, in the South at the good old H E B grocery store, Mm -hmm. they have, um, like we have cream of, cream of chicken and cream of mushroom. Uh Uh-huh. They have cream of poblano and cream of jalapeno. What? Just soup. Yeah. So really, I brought some of that home. But um, that's awesome. Yeah, they've got chubs of bologna. Hmm. So we all know our Oscar Mayer bologna mm-hmm. with that the little red, real plastic red plastic. Thing. Yep. Well, that red plastic is the casing from the chub. Which, if you don't know what a chub is, when you go to Sam's Club or Costco, the big long tube mm-hmm. of hamburger, that is a chub of hamburger. I packed chubs uh, for the meat plant here while I was student teaching. Really? It was a sweet gig. I loved it. Yeah. So, a chub of bologna was about yay big. Fourth wall. Breaking it down again. That big. Um, Yeah. Roughly the size of my forearm. Yeah. But... We've got a chub of bologna we're going to smoke. Yeah. And we're going to have smoked bologna sandwiches. I'm pretty excited about it. I am too. Hmm. Yeah. So I've got a recipe that's basically score it, slather it, rub it, and smoke it. Uh-huh. Um, we can decide. You can be pondering this. Maybe we'll take feedback from our listening audience. Another thing that they can interact with us on social media yes, about. Please do. Freaking comment. It's a lot more fun if you guys come um, back. I may have ordered, um, I think it's peach jalapeno rib glaze. Ooh. That I thought could be. On the bologna? On the bologna. Dude. Like cash money, right? That sounds awesome. Well, still a loaf of Haley's homemade white bread. Dude. I should have brought home a jar of Duke's mayonnaise, too. And then, I've heard good things about Duke's. Dude, I've never had so it. so good. They've got it in St. George. Oh. Um, hmm. But, yeah. We'll... Uh, and I... I can never remember what brand it is on this side of the, the Rocky Mountains. Uh-huh. Uh, if it's Best's or Hellman's here. Best Man, Foods. Is it Best Foods mayonnaise so. here? Yeah. That's okay. what I get. Well, That's my favorite. It's the same brand. It's just one one side of the mountain calls it Hellman's. It's like uh, Edie's and Dryers. Hmm. Same thing. Yeah. Hardy's, Carl Jr. Yeah. So strange. Carl's Jr. Um, Anyways. Yeah. So that should be cool. I'm excited. And we'll see. I mean, we're, I don't want to set us up for failure here if things don't work out, but think about doing some live type of stuff and and see how it goes. So yeah, we'll see. Uh, See if we can figure that out this week and yeah, do a little Instagram live yeah. and then, uh, that'll probably be the podcast next week is the, is the recording from, from our lives. Yeah. That'll be cool. So tune in until next time. I'm John. I'm Mike. This is fat guys with smokers. Thanks for listening to the fat guys with smokers podcast. Be sure to check us out on Instagram and Facebook. Leave us a comment. We'd love to hear from you. Be sure to subscribe so you don't forget to tune in for even more nonsense from a couple of fat guys with smokers. Don't forget to like, subscribe.